Hi everyone, I'm Renee and I'm a relationship coach and I'm here today to introduce or talk to you on the online prosperity show about understanding human needs and desires in the context of relationships. I hope you enjoy the show today. Now welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show and today I've brought you the relationship expert herself, Renee. Renee, how are you doing my love? I am absolutely fabulous um, today. Yeah, Melbourne's really giving us some sunshine. I love it. How are you? Fantastic. Don't get too excited. It's Melbourne. Hey, four seasons in a day. You just, you just have to wait and give me something else. Now, Renee, thank you so much for um, having uh, time to speak to us on a show like this. First of all, if you're watching this show right now, you'd understand in a world where technology has taken over, um, you know, our, our need to connect with other humans, you can just swipe right and you're automatically in a relationship or you can just like, comment and share and people actually, uh, you know, suffer from depression just because you did not show up to their um, photo or to their Instagram picture. We actually need an intervention and that's the reason why we've brought to you um, Renee who is a relationship expert and I'll explain to you what a relationship expert is and it's somebody who actually understands human needs and desires within the context of the way we feel, the way we interact, the way we actually connect and behave with ourselves and other people around us. So somebody who has a solution, techniques and strategies to actually achieve desired outcomes in relationships. Us as humans, if we're left alone to our own devices, we, without rules and regulations, we could either kill, maim, or hurt each other's feelings. And in the process, it's not going to create a world that we want to live in. Now, Rene has so much experience in relationships, whether you're uh, single, whether you are divorced, or you are between um, relationships, she's got solutions that can absolutely help you out so that you can be, do, and have a happier existence. Now, Rene, I could go on and on um, about your accolades and everything else that comes along with it. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became the relationship expert. Yeah, thank you for that intro. That was pretty fabulous. Um, look, it's an interesting story because for 20 years I'd had been a travel agent. And it wasn't until I went through my own divorce and then managed to sort of get through that that people came asking me like, wow, what have you done? You know, you're looking so good. Like, like how's that possible kind of thing? And you just seem really happy. Like... And I went, oh, okay, well, this is what I did and started speaking to people. And then it just sort of evolved from there. I went on a bit of an entrepreneurial journey with my travel business at the time and helping people have like a, a divorce holiday because I had done that, went to Vegas, went on a retreat, all those sorts of things. And I just felt it in me that I had to help people in this space because it was, it's such a hard, hard time. And at the time I was suffering anxiety and depression, a whole lot of uncertainty about my future. How was I going to cope? My kids, you know, it all goes on. And then, you know, someone said to me, yeah, you can't do that. You're not a coach. And I sort of shrunk back into my box and then I went, but hang on a minute. And I can remember the exact time it happened to and where I was sitting and everything. But I went, you know what, what if I could? What if I absolutely could become that? Because who said I had to be a travel agent for the next 50 years? And I had been feeling a bit unfulfilled. And I went, well, okay, time to, you know, upskill. And um, so I did. I went on a massive, massive career change and have studied umpteen coaching technologies, technologies, techniques, um, because I wanted to, I suppose, get the credentials before I called myself a coach. I'd been mentoring because that's, there's a massive difference um, and coaching is much more empowering for people. So I thought, okay, do that. Yeah, and just literally studied, studied family law, the whole thing and from basically my breakup to breakthrough and then just started 
you know, studying people more and what was really going on below the surface because people will say, here's my problem and that's never really the problem. So it just became that and then, yeah, understanding different stages of relationships and just really talking to people that would reach out to me and understanding, as you said, their needs, their desires, their wants, their interactions, values, beliefs, you know, our human needs that drive us, our values that drive us in our unconscious mind. So that's pretty much how it all happened. It's And it's just evolved and I've changed over the years as well since doing this. And, um, yeah, it's been a pretty <laughs> interesting journey. Yeah, like from travel agent to family law is a massive difference. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you are actually, thank you so much for sharing that, uh, by the way, Rainy. You are actually an embodiment of how human beings are not a stagnant being and you've got to evolve in order for you to fulfill certain needs and desires in and uh, within yourself and to actually uh, perform and do well in life. So obviously that involvement could be happening or that's that transformation could be happening to a lot of people in their relationship but they're not realizing that who they were when they first met their partner is not who they're presenting themselves as now in that time of your own transitions um a lot of things would have changed but do you think something remained the same that you kept holding on to I just wanted to help people learn it became more rather than because I was being known in the media as the divorce go-to girl for the last five years, but it became more about relationships and it wasn't so much the divorce because really the divorce is just a piece of paper and it's a process, but it's the relationships and how when people hold on to negative emotions from even before a relationship starts, it carries, it carries through and it plays out and has a massive effect. Our role models that we grew up with as far as that we subconsciously take in what we see around us may not have been the best for us because I know a lot of people who, you know, history sometimes does repeat because I've, I've spoken to enough people out there about it and we don't know what we don't know as far as relationships um, and as a couple, you're either, this is a Martini comment, but you're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotting. So if you're not growing as a person, then you're kind of dying inside and part of our human need is to grow. So again, it just became more about, well, how do I get, how can I serve people more and get them to know more about themselves so that they're in their true self, so they have a better relationship with themselves and then other people. Because in our relationships, when they don't work or when they fail, as we use, or there's a massive breakup, it plays out on so many areas of life. And one is business. It's people struggle to function at work. I can re remember when my marriage ended, I struggled to work and sit there and I was working from home. I didn't have to go to an office, but it's just that you don't know what you don't know in how to do all this. And it just kept coming back to me that we've got to have these relationships with ourselves so we have better relationships with somebody else. And when you're in your true self and know who you are, then nothing can take that away as far as if you lose your job, often our identity is attached to our job and who we're with. I'm either a missus or a mister on the other half. He completes me. She's this, you know, the ball and chain, all that language that goes on plays a massive effect in our unconscious mind. And when somehow they're taken away from us because it's not within us as such, then that's when we lose who we are. Absolutely. But when you can have and know exactly who you are any moment of the day and have a strong sense of self and your identity and self-worth, then that can't be taken away unless you allow that to happen. Absolutely. So, so in, in, in other words, you are saying the first relationship that should exist is a relationship with yourself. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Right. Now, a lot of people would 
as you mentioned, that uh, whatever happens around them, Auntie Sally and Uncle Tom, uh, lovey Davy in front of people, but behind the scenes, uh, they're not all that um, because that's what society now expects. You did touch on a little bit about the environment, and I'm now just going to say society as a whole. How much of an influence does society really have on keeping people dissatisfied with their relationships? Oh, well, massive, because did you go to relationship high school? There's nothing like that, I don't think. There's, that's exactly right. And when you said before, like, yeah, you can swipe right and you're in a relationship and people get, oh, you know, he didn't like my post when you first start dating or we're not Facebook official. Like, <laughs> I mean, I know it's all relative, in today's society as such, but I, I rarely post stuff about my boyfriend and I, and some people didn't even know I was in a relationship because I don't need to do that. I don't need that validation. Um, but it, it is society people. And I say this with love that often people will take on someone else's opinion about somebody else. And this is what you should do because that's what happened to them. Whereas if you have a good relationship with yourself, you don't, you know, you can have a chat and stuff, but you need to be able to make some decisions in that regard for you, not what's out there. And just because it's a swipe right or left and it's disposable, it's easy to date and break up by text or whatever's online. Like that's not real. It's, it's not reality. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> and it's just the way now that society has been set up. No, in all of this um, that we, you know, technology is coming in and people are being desensitized uh, as to, you know, how to actually feel, first of all, love themselves and also mm -hmm. express the love to other people in maybe different languages of love. How important is emotional intelligence, um, you know, when it comes to connecting to humans either it's in a business sense, client and a business person or husband and wife or daughter um, and father or mother? It's a great skill to have because a lot of people will, or society, we take things so personally and we make it about us. And if we instead of got like frustrated about something and we decided to get a bit more curious about what's going on for that person or our kids, I wonder what a different result we would get then. So it's being aware of, well, where are my emotions anyway? Am I reacting? And I'm, am I reacting from a place of love and trust or fear and doubt? Absolutely. Now, one other thing, like you keep really talking about, you know, self-esteem, self-love, it's all to do with the self. Normally in relationships, when that is not being satisfied by the other partner, uh, people then tend to maybe have an affair or divorces happen and things like that. Mm. How, when people come to you, how do you encourage them to sort of connect with either themselves? Do you have any techniques that, um, uh, that you've used that help people really connect, especially with sure. their timelines? Sure. So as you just mentioned before about love languages and, and love, it's, it's sort of backtracking to that, but being relevant to that last question is if you don't know how to love yourself or what your own personal love language is, you cannot expect people to have a crystal ball and know what that is for you. And sometimes more so us beautiful, beautiful women, we expect men or whoever you're dating to know exactly what you mean every time you say something. So <laughs> because women often um, are not as direct as men. And I love this about men and what I love working about men because they mean what they say and that there's no delving deeper as such. Sometimes there is like, don't get me wrong. And it's not all just men and women thing. It's well human. But this is typical research, right, that's, that's out there. So women will often say one thing, but then you ask, but really, well, what, what else do you really mean by that? It's like, oh, 
what do you want for dinner tonight? Or do you want this? But no, really, actually, I wanted steak. and I didn't want fish, but you wanted fish. So I wanted you to have fish, <laughs> you know, or uh, driving in the car. Do you want to stop for the toilet? No, nah, honey, I'm fine. But you wanted to ask him to stop to the car, the toilet, because you needed to go. So it's just gorgeous humans and we are different. Um, and it's really important that we are understanding ourselves to one another more and the love language is a back to the question you asked is often where I start with people because I want to know well ha, what have you done that's worked what hasn't worked but I'll ask people straight up you know is it worth being married to this person I've got a whole video series coming out about this so people can delve deeper themselves initially but um is it worth being in this relationship um what of what what do they need to be in the relationship what and what do they not want in the relationship but it's also understanding too well, with the, our six human needs drive us and their significance variety certainty love and connection growth and contribution and they drive every single human on the planet so it's understanding well where are you at how can you meet each other's love like needs at a 10 out of 10 all the time and how can you love your partner how they want to be loved and not how you do because someone might have words of affirmation um as their primary love language and the others might be receiving gifts and they're opposite so they're not feeling loved so that's a great place to start is with the love languages um, and, and, and get that then when I'm in working one-on-one -on -one with people, we delve deeper again because there's more to, to that to understand. Um, but yeah, that, that's just a few of the tips and tools that I start out with. Absolutely. <clears throat> this is absolutely beautiful because one other thing that also happens um, as society, people feel like it's an embarrassing thing to reach out and ask for help, especially when it comes to matters of relationships, because then that feeling like they are a failure um, of which, like you mentioned earlier on, is their relationship high school. You know what I mean? We're not taught how to, how to express ourselves. We're not taught how to uh, love ourselves. We're not essentially taught how to extend that love to other people. Now, Renee, yeah. if somebody has listened to, you know, our, our little conversation here, and is thinking to themselves, maybe I really need to, um, you know, tighten up the, the, the loose ends in my relationship, either with my, the people around me or their clients. What, what's the best way that they can get a hold of you? Um, they can email or call my numbers. You know, that's fine. Email, Facebook. I'm all over social. I'll often do Facebook lives that they can comment on. But I, you know, I just say, don't, don't feel like there is any shame or fear, even though you will be, but remember you weren't taught how to do relationships in high school or university. So it's okay to know that things may not be working out because, you know, 50% of first marriages end in divorce. It's higher sixties in 60 in the second marriage that people don't talk about. So we need to stop and learn where we're at because often there is always a way to repair um, but you, you can, you can reach out to me, phone, email, um, social media, whatever works. I'm here and I'm, I'm not that scary. And you can always, although I did get called a smiling assassin the other day with one of the guys I was working with, <laughs> but I take that as a compliment. Um, but yeah, just, just know that, that there's always a way to, to move forward and anyone on any, with in any area, if you can take care of the negative emotions first and get rid of the hurt, then often things can progress in business and in life in many areas a, a lot smoother than, than you ever thought possible. Absolutely. Now, like I said earlier on, you know what I mean? Every relationship begins with you. And if you don't love yourself, then the love that you give to others is either needy and you're either um you know uh, turning them away or turning them off and um sometimes if you don't have any inner happiness within yourself you feel empty yeah. so obviously you can't give up what you do not have now renee so you know now that we have sort of you know pulled the curtain and shown to people that 
uh, this is normal that it's okay not to know how to how to relationship um what's the sort of first go to advice that you give to people when they show up at your doorstep and you know they're probably going through a divorce or they just really want to consolidate the love they have for the family that they're in so the one thing that i'm i suggest to everybody is to turn to gratitude um because we can always be angry and sad at the other person and what they've done or haven't done because the first thing anyone says to me when they start talking is it's all about the other person what they haven't done what they that you know they, they're this they're that they haven't done this and we have to stop because we have to take full responsibility in ourselves in the relationship and out of it in work everywhere it's always up to us um so it's called i we always get people to to be grateful for that person for everything that they have because your brain can't occupy to a negative and a positive emotion at the same time so you're angry and sad turn to gratitude gratitude will change your world and if you never ever see me call out to me or whatever just be grateful every morning and every night and i would almost i'd love to say guarantee but you will notice a significant amount of change in your emotional state and stability with within four weeks so turn to gratitude and sometimes I suppose some things are meant to end you know there's that reason season a lifetime and sometimes things just aren't meant to keep going absolutely so be be okay with that that maybe you've just grown too far apart but you're still going to have a relationship with this person, especially if there's kids and, you know, even ending a business relationship, things don't need to get nasty like they typically do because angry people and people in fear and hurt and guilt make angry decisions, make decisions from fear. And that's the last place you want to make a decision from. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Renee, I can't thank you enough for the time, the knowledge and the expertise that you showed on the show today. And as you can see, um, if you're watching this part right now, relationship coaching really focuses purely on the strategies and understanding, you know, the, the, the techniques, the insights of how we actually function as human beings. Like Rene says, there is no school or education that helps us, um, you know, do well in relationships, but everything that we look at is a relationship and, you know, you always have to consistently be learning. Okay. There's a lot of gender differences. Now there's a lot of difference in human behavior. And, um, I was brought up knowing that no two fingers on the same hand are of the same height. So you might think, that you are the same as another person, but they're a totally different person. So an effective relationship coach will focus on build, building and developing your emotional intelligence, intelligence that will then dramatically improve on all your relationships. Now, Renee, thank you so much for opening the floodgates of what people can and um, able to achieve uh, in their relationships today. You are so welcome. Thank you so much for having me on here. And just if I could leave one last piece of love for people that, so they know that, you know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. I like that. I love that. If nothing changes, nothing changes. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, so grateful to be on here and, and share what I'm passionate about. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Renee, for your time today.